All right, this is a quick tour of my lac enclosure. Um, this is my Prusa MK3S, and uh, one of the first things I built for this and printed was the hardware for this. If you go on Thingiverse, it'll be the uh, top liked and top collected IKEA lac table hardware set. Um, I printed the, the hinges that go here on the corner, the, uh, the door handles, the little magnetic pieces that go here to keep your door shut. Um, the one thing I did do that deviated from the regular build was cut off about four inches from the bottom legs and put end caps on those. And I moved that material up to the top level here. There's actually a piece of two by four in there that's glued into place. And then I used a Sharpie to clean it up. I wanted extra height to ensure if I did a tall print, uh, the filament wouldn't get bound up. I don't think it would be a problem otherwise, but I just erred on the side of caution. Have a little more space in there. Um, did print a uh, fanned out filament pass-through, which I really like because it actually allows that to swing with the, uh, the extruder um, and not get bound up on a corner. Um, that's pretty nice too. It's actually got a threaded nut on the top there to mount that in place. Um, coming back down here to the base, go from the bottom to the top here. Um, I've got a tub. Got this at Walmart. It's uh, it's sealed, and uh, I got this dehumidifier from Amazon that you plug in to dry once it uh, builds up a little moisture from pulling the humidity out of the air in here. Stays around 19 to 20 percent, so uh, works pretty well. Uh, moving up here, I've got brackets right here, which keep this middle table from sliding around. I didn't actually screw them into this table, but these pieces do screw into this base um, to keep the second table from moving around. Uh, moving up, I've got my OctoPrint. Uh, Raspberry Pi running OctoPrint here. That actually, that Pi connects to the USB port on your Prusa. And uh, there's a ton of functionality that you get from OctoPrint. Um, you can drag and drop your files via Wi-Fi instead of transferring with a, with a flash card. I uh, run the Discord remote plug-in, so when I'm out and about and away from my printer, I can get updates on my print. And if you've got like a smartwatch, it's, you know, your smartwatch shows you notifications and your phone's gonna be running Discord and those uh, notifications come through to your watch. So that's pretty cool to see the status there. And you can also request status, it'll send you a snapshot. I'm running a camera there so I can see how my print looks um, while that's running. The other thing I do with OctoPrint is I run the PSU uh, control plugin. And so those pins right there run down and, and work this relay. Um, what this allows me to do is after this thing's been idle for 30 minutes, that's the default value in the plugin. It'll trip that relay um, and I built that little box so that relay in there will shut off power to that power strip and that power strip runs my printer, my LEDs, and my fan. So uh, when I get ready to print again, I go to OctoPrint and click connect and it'll trip that relay and turn it on and all this stuff will come online. So it's a really worthy upgrade. You can get the Pi, I think it's the Pi 3 Wi-Fi or Pi 3B Wi-Fi unit I got. Uh, you can print a case. I'm sure most people have an extra USB charger hanging around you can power that with. Um, power ship's five bucks and you can get the relay down there off of AliExpress I think for like a buck. Um, so it's a pretty worthy project. If you look on Thingiverse I've got uh, the Thing files up there to print that out and show out to wire that up. Um, moving over here I moved my power supply down below off my printer. Um, I'd read that this can help add heat to the enclosure and also um, power supplies don't like heat that much, so I went ahead and aired on the side of caution since I was tearing everything apart anyway and moved this down. Um, put the printed pass through there, that's actually threaded so it just screws on after you make the hole, pretty cool. And then you can see over there there's a bracket where the power supply used to be. Um, you add that to um, keep that top part of the printer rigid. The power supply was doing that before, so once you remove that you got to replace it with a bracket. Uh, moving up here. I've got, uh, let's see here, I've got the paver here and I didn't realize when I added the extra height so that the filament would have free movement that it would really come in handy that height because I added this paver, um, which is about an inch and a half tall, along with those little acoustic pads. The paver itself made the biggest difference in sound um, getting transferred through your IKEA table into the floor um, and hearing it in the other room. The uh, paver you can pick up at Lowe's for like five bucks. I took a sanding block and cleaned off all the edges sanded all the surfaces and then I blasted it with an air compressor. That got rid of all the grit on this uh, paver and uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's not going to leave grit and stuff inside my enclosure. There's also some pieces of felt I put on the bottom there, like furniture slider type felt pieces. Um, so it doesn't uh, scratch the bottom of this when I move it around and uh, also maybe, you know, add a little bit of less uh, sound transfer through to that IKEA table. 
Uh, let's see here, moving up, I did add LEDs. Um, I designed and printed some housing to aim them in at like a 45 degree angle, so that keeps my light going in there. That one goes directly down, but it puts the light where you want it on the printer. It doesn't really pour out into the room, um, which is nice at night. You know, the enclosure's lit, but it's not flooding my room with extra light. I want the light on the printer, so that works out really well. Um, that runs down here to this little box. Remote, there's a little uh, thing that sticks out there to work with the remote. Got another pass through there to plug that into my power strip down below. Um, the other thing I added, which was a nice upgrade, is this exhaust fan. Um, it's 120 millimeter Noctua, and I designed that intake there so it can pull air from the middle of the enclosure. And it's thermally controlled with that little box there. You can get that on Thingiverse too. Um, the unit in there, at above 85 degrees, it starts ramping up. By the time it gets to 95, it's full blast, which works out great for my print temperatures. Um, and that actually pulls out heat and any kind of fumes from ABS, PLA, PETG, I don't smell any of that in my room here. It takes it up here and out the into the attic. Um, that hose there I got off of Amazon, I wanted something a little more neutral instead of like a white or a silver to really stand out. Um, so you can get that off of Amazon. Uh, let's see what else here. Moving up to the top, um, I printed these little rollers. You can get those bearings off of Amazon, super cheap. They're like super low end. Um, you don't need high performance bearings for just moving a, uh, a roll of filament and you can get those uh, roller plastic pieces off of uh, Thingiverse. Uh, let's see here, plexiglass on the side, I actually got a sheet from Lowe's and just cut it out myself on my table saw. If you have a uh, metal cutting blade, the teeth are fine enough that you can get a pretty decent cut. I mean, they're not perfect, but um, they're not bad at the same time and uh, worked out really well to cut my own plexiglass. I did put some weather stripping up here to make sure that I maintain a small enough gap around all these windows so the intake going in there um, and the exhaust fan pulling on it keeps a negative pressure to keep all that smell and all those uh, fumes and the heat in the enclosure, which has uh, worked out really well. Um, the other thing I did, and this is recommended on the forums, is replace that back piece right there on the heat bed. It puts the wire out at a 45 degree angle so it doesn't bang into the plexiglass on the back there. Um, I also, this isn't part of the enclosure, but something I did was I added this camera bracket so I can view my print in OctoPrint and do time lapse. Um, this aims it right at the print head, which is nice because that's really the most important thing to see when you're out and about to know that your print's going down nice and clean. And then I also added this bracket on the back of the X motor um, as some strain relief. Um, that wire coming out of the bottom had a pretty good flex to it, so this uh, allows you to give a little strain relief there. Um, aside from that, I think that's about it. Um, have enough room down here on the second shelf to hold all your uh, pieces and parts and materials that you use for printing. And uh, overall, this enclosure really uh, provided a nice home for my printer. Um, takes fumes and heat out of my office and uh, the Octo print along with it really adds nicely to the uh, printing experience if you will and the convenience. Um, that's a, it's a huge upgrade. I definitely recommend it to anybody that's able to use that for their printer. Um, so I hope this helps and uh, happy printing.